Greetings, everyone. This is our introduction to the lab designed to measure the reactants of inductors, inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. And we're going to do this by simply putting in a capacitor, as we have right here, or an inductor, as we have over here, and measuring the reactants as a function of driver frequency. So we've got a frequency drive, we've got a, an oscillator here, and we're driving the uh, the, the circuit. Uh, we're going to turn the amplitude all the way up. This is our amplitude knob, so that goes all the way up. Uh, after we've powered this thing on here, we're going to set this to sine wave. That's not really important. Uh, and we can change the frequency over many decades, many powers of 10 for the frequency right here. Uh, you see I have it set right sort of in the middle at 1,000. And then I can fine tune it over here. It's turned up to just over 3 times that 1,000 is 3,000 is the frequency of the driver. Let's, let's trace what goes on here. Uh, we've got uh, the, the, the power comes here, uh, the, the positive lead, it goes here, it's connected to our capacitor. Our capacitor, uh, we insert this thing, we pull down on these spring leads and there's a hole there that the capacitor lead can go through and pinches it back up. Uh, that comes through here, we've got the, the the lead on this side is trapped the same way as the lead on this side, uh, so the current can come out here. And when the current can come out here, it comes over here. This is a sense resistor, and so this is so we got a 10 ohm resistor put in there, and then it comes back here and goes back into the power supply. That's our complete uh, series circuit: a resistor and a capacitor. We're measuring the potential across the resistor with the oscilloscope here and we're measuring the potential across the capacitor uh, with our uh, meter over here. So, see if you can follow that, see if you can trace that all the way through. Uh, we've got this set to AC, we're working with AC currents now, AC voltages. So we got that set to AC and we can change. With our oscilloscope, let's look at a few things. I don't know if you can see this or not, but with the oscilloscope, we can change the, the, the vertical scale the squares on there and so I can I can I can make the, the signal look bigger or smaller and then I can change the horizontal scales to the time so that's the vertical scales the potential across the resistor uh, time is across here and then I've got the measure button pushed up here and so the measure button is giving me some data across here it says that the peak voltage is about 10.7 peak to peak across here 10.7 volts um, so that's what I would write down for this driver frequency. Uh, I can look at the driver frequency, but I'm going to let it tell me what the driver frequency is. It says it's 3.115, it's bouncing around, but 3.11 um, kilohertz. That's what this device says it is too. I don't know if you can see it on there or not, but it says it's 3.11 kilohertz. And so um, that's the 3.1 times the 1 right here. So I'm going to record that data point as 3.11 one kilohertz and I'm going to measure the potential across the resistor uh, as 10.7 volts and then I'm going to use Ohm's law to determine the current and I'm going to measure the potential across the capacitor over here uh, on with, with this device and it looks like it's 4.759 volts so that's my first data point as I turn watch as I turn the the frequency down a little bit uh, you see that pulse getting longer. And so you see, I've turned the frequency down some. It now says the frequency is 2.02 um, .02 kilohertz. Uh, and, and there's an arrow right here. I don't know if you can see it on the screen or not. That's a trigger level. So I'm going to trigger. Uh, so I, here I am triggering my, my oscilloscope so that it actually gives me a signal right here. It says I've got 8.72 volts peak to peak. And I've got, uh, and I've got uh, 5.88 volts across my capacitor, and there we're good to go again at 2.02 kilohertz. I record all three of those, and I keep dialing this thing down and up in order to do, to do this. Uh, and so if I want to get a little bit higher than I can get right here, I'll, I'll, drop, I'll drive this up to 10. Look what happens when I push the 10 kilohertz up here. You can see a lot of peaks across here. It says now that I'm at 31.5 kilohertz is my, my driver frequency. It says I got 14 volts peak to peak, and 
and I've got 0.6 volts, uh, 0.63 volts across the, the capacitor. Another data point, I can calculate the capacitive reactance at each one of these points, and then I can graph the capacitive reactance as a function of, uh, of frequency. That's what we want to do. Uh, again, I can change this knob, watch what happens as I start to turn this frequency down. Uh, look at that go. Now I'm down to 8.4 kilohertz and just keep pushing this down. If I need to change, as I move the trigger level, watch what happens when I get above where we are here. It's not triggering anymore. So I can move this down into where it's triggering and you see it's triggering. You can see the arrow right there, it's grabbing. I mean, that means the signal's getting big enough to trigger the oscilloscope right here. I can change the, the timing. If I wanna look at it a little more closer or whatever, I can change uh, the volts uh, per, per box on the vertical scale and so on. And, there, and again, I get a lot of points. So for this particular capacitor, uh, we'll measure the capacitance, we'll bring that big, uh, that big capacitance and, and react, uh, uh, inductance uh, measuring device we had in the first day of lab, we'll bring it back up here and you'll be able to measure your capacitance and your inductance. And, and, and so it looked like this would be a pretty good, I could get most of the data that I want in the sort of uh, one kilohertz to 100 kilohertz range right here or maybe 100 hertz to 100 kilohertz right across here. It looks like I'm gonna get good results. Pay attention to the frequency here. It says it's 4.92 kilohertz. It says 10 kilohertz times something on the order of a half. So that makes sense. Uh, make sure this says 4.92 kilohertz. It does too. It's possible to trigger uh, the oscilloscope. It's possible to trigger the, the signal that you're getting, the voltage across your resistor, again, from which you can use Ohm's law to get the current, it's possible to trigger that on noise, a high frequency noise. You might have, so if this frequency is very high relative to the frequency you're driving it at, for example, if it doesn't match, be concerned that you might be triggering on, uh, on some noise, oscillations that are there that aren't your driver oscillations. Everything looks good with what we have right now. Uh, so this is kind of what we want to do. What I'm going to do is I can power this thing down and uh, move this over. If you are getting that noise, if you are getting triggering on this noise, one of the things, I was having trouble, uh, one of the things, I just reversed the leads on the oscilloscope here, and it made it much easier for me to trigger on the, um, the signal that I was looking for instead of that background noise. Uh, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring the, the <clears throat> inductor in, and I'm just gonna move this whole thing over to the inductor, and now I have an inductive circuit instead of a capacitive circuit. I'm gonna put it, put it back on, I'll put, turn the driver back on, and I'm gonna make that um, sine wave again right here. I turn the amplitude all the way up and I keep it there. I don't change that. Now I'm measuring the potential across the inductor and I don't seem to be triggering over here. So I need to go try to find my signal and see what I can find now. I'm gonna to go to a little bit lower frequency with this inductor in there, uh, maybe even lower still, and see what, see what I can find down in here. Oops. So I'm going to see if I can find the signal and I can trigger on it here with the conductor in place. There's an offset here so we can slide uh, this signal up and down and it's kind of what I'm playing with uh, right there and so I can continue to Go out here and try to find my signal uh, across here. Um, I have to trace this and make sure we still have a good connection. One thing I want to show you over here on the trigger menu, um, we can trigger, we're triggering on channel one. That's where we've got this thing plugged in. So we want to trigger across there. Um, we can continue to change the timing and so on of our signal. There, there we start to see the signal show up. It's a much slower signal because I turned the frequency way, way down, right? So now we start to see our signal appear in there. And I can keep to 
keep dialing this thing down and now we've got our signal back. Um, it, it says, okay, I, I'm looking at the trigger. I move, you see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I, I've got the trigger. I can move the trigger up and down, but I want to get back to the measure window and say, oh, look at that. I got 1.59 uh, volts peak to peak. It says the frequency is 170 hertz. I look over here and I've got to turn to about 1.8 um, times 100. So that looks right. And it does say 170 hertz. It says 0 0.170 kilohertz over here. So now I can dial this thing through and um, watch the board. The board tends to have some stuff on it. Um, now I can dial this thing through and um, measure this, uh, do the exact same thing with the, the inductor. I can find the range. Uh, again, watch what happens here as I turn the, the frequency, as I change the frequency knob on the driver, I get bigger amplitude uh, voltage across the inductor or a smaller voltage across the inductor, smaller, I'm sorry, this is across the resistor. So it's a bigger, bigger amplitude means bigger current. I'm driving more current, more current, more current through the, uh, through the inductor as I turn the frequency down. I, I'm kind of not surprised by that. As I turn the frequency up, I'm driving less and less current through the inductor and at the same time I'm measuring the potential across the inductor here and that's what we got that's what we're doing is we're going to do one inductor at a lot of different frequencies one capacitor at a lot of different frequencies and we're going to do an analysis to find the frequency dependency of the frequency dependence of reactants capacitive reactants and inductive reactants and see if that agrees with what we would expect it to be so uh, there we are everybody uh, that's our, our experiment for this week I think it'll be fun. Looking forward to seeing you in lab and doing this experiment. And take care.